Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all the inspiring stories why you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. My guest today is Suprana Chopra. Hi, Suprana. Hi, Kiran. So happy to be here and thanks a lot for having me here. I really feel honored and privileged to be part of this sisterhood. So thanks so much. Oh, I'm so I'm so uh, humbled by your words and also the fact that I'm so grateful to every woman who comes on the podcast because I think we're just this is what it's all about. It's about showcasing women. So let's carry on. So welcome, 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 and thank you for choosing to come on to the You're Not Invisible After Fifty podcast. Um, I want to get you to introduce yourself in one line or more. Uh, who you are um, to our listeners. Okay, so if you want one line, I'll give you both the options. If you want one line, I call myself a teacher of God. Um, And why I say that is not out of arrogance, uh, but out of deep humility that uh, each one of us, and I know that I am here to be doing God's work in whichever way I'm capable of and all of us I think each one of us has been sent here to do God's work in some way or the other the form may be different but the intent is the same so in one word I call myself a teacher of God and a slightly more expanded version would be that I am a holistic life coach I am a healer life teacher I teach the Louise philosophy here in India I've been doing it for many years now Um, I'm a course in miracles teacher and I'm a yoga teacher and who knows what's next So this is what I do currently and I just feel really uh, privileged and blessed to be doing this work and making a difference in, you know, in some way or the other to anybody's life, whoever's, you know, life I touch, there is, uh, I feel, you know, some difference I make and that's really what makes me really, really happy and just very, very fulfilled. I mean, that fills me with such emotion because I can resonate with you because I think now this part of my life, I feel that I am also... Um, doing the work that I should be doing, um, you know, and I talk about not having a voice in the past, but certainly it's a voice now. And I think, you know, we are here, we are put in a place in a position where we are expected, wanted, driven to do the work of the Lord. And and if we can give anything back to the world, what a great thing to do, right? So. Let's move on and get to know a little bit more. Well, not a little bit, a lot more about you. So in this podcast, in this podcast, we'll cover your life story, the past, the present, if there was a trigger point of 50, um, and also what the future looks like. So let's start with the past, wherever you want to start, wherever you want to tell our listeners about your past. Sure. So I had a very regular middle class uh, upbringing uh, where education and doing well in academics was you know, was very important. That's where the way we grew up because everybody was professional, working. Um, so that was a, the that was the focus and that was the emphasis that was placed on us. And fortunately, we all did well, me and my siblings. Um, and then I embarked on um, a career in advertising because I had done my master's in mass communication after my economics degrees and uh, degree in economics. Um, I spent 18 years in in the crazy world of advertising, uh, working for a very large multinational company. Uh, Pretty much, I think for most part of that career, I was quite driven. Um, I loved the excitement 
uh, I love the demands uh, of that pretty taxing career. It, it is pretty hard. It looks very glamorous from the outside, but behind the scenes, you know, there's a lot of hard work behind behind the fancy campaigns that you see. Uh, so I think the last maybe couple of years of my working of my corporate life, I could feel that you know this was not it. There was I had everything. I had uh, the position. I had the power. I was traveling to exotic locations. I was an associate vice president by then, having invested in eighteen years in the career. Uh, but yet, you know, I felt a bit empty, a little. Um, there was this aching feeling within that, you know, there was more to life than this. Um, I had nothing to complain about in terms of materially, but yet there was this empty, very vacant feeling inside that, you know, there was something more to do. Um, and I went through what I call, um, you know, a, a two-year period of what I coined was uh, a period of divine discontent, where I would go to work every day but not feel really motivated not feel really super charged about it and there was this what i call divine discontent and why i call it divine is let me just <laughs> explain it to you that through that period of two years when i was you know questioning myself my motivation what was i doing here what was i meant to do you know the kind of questions uh, that all of us are faced at some at some point in time for me it didn't happen at 50 it happened in my early 40s this so called trigger point uh, that's where the turning point was um, so it took me two years of that period of divine discontent to really see that, okay, I, I, this is not what I want to be doing. This is not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. And I call it divine because I think through that process of divine discontent em emerged something which I call my sole purpose. Because had I not gone through that difficult period of divine discontentment, I would not have arrived at what I was meant to, what I was sent here to do. Okay, like all of us, are sent here to do God's work uh, or sole purpose or whatever you may call it. There are many ways of you know saying the same thing. And so I find that that two, two year period was very precious because it led up to something. So I finally had the courage to hang my boots, my corporate boots after 18, 18 and a half, and a half years. It was scary as hell because, you know, there was a lot of financial sort of thing attached to it. There was a little financial insecurity because mine was the only regular big income and my husband was a self-employed person so you know there was that bit of insecurity but yet I think I got the support from my husband and from my family uh, and I'm really sort of grateful for that support to take this very major step which was scary for everyone including me and I had no idea I had no plan in mind no plan but somewhere I, I, I had this abiding trust that I would be taken care of. Although I was not very spiritually inclined at that stage in life, but I think that faith was there. Uh, I somewhere knew that the universe had my back and I would be taken care of. And I think it's that faith which made me take this leap. It was literally this leap of faith and take this pretty, you know, seemingly reckless step of, you know, giving it all up and giving up the income and putting my family in jeopardy. You know how it is. And it's quite interesting because, you know, I've spoken to uh, quite a few women who are of spiritual faith and I too am of that as well. And I think you do, you kind of come to a point where you think, well, this can't be it. And then you know that you've got to be doing something different, but you don't know what that looks like or what shape or form it takes. And also, in addition to that, you know that whatever step you take, you're going to be fine. And I, I that, that resonates with me because I think, at the same time, I almost, you know, in my 50s, I took some massive steps. And, you know, and this thing that I'm doing now, currently, I'd started at 58. And, wow. you know, it's like, okay, I knew that I had to be doing something different. And I, like yourself, Suparna, had actually come from a very corporate career and then took a gap and thought, I, I don't want to do this anymore. And, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you find something that resonates with you. And that's where, but you also know that you're going to be all right, right? So please yeah. carry on. Yeah. Also, you know, um, this whole thing, one is a faith, taking that leap of faith that I'll be taken care of. That's really important, uh, you know, to make a, uh, you know, to change your trajectory in life and to take that major step. Um, and um, uh, the other thing is, you know, I feel that, you know, I hear a lot of this thing that, you know, finding your purpose, finding your purpose. And what I experienced in my journey was that um, 
you know it's not about finding a purpose sometimes the purpose finds you you know and and that happens and for me that's what happened that was my experience of the purpose finding me rather than me going seeking or searching for a purpose you know i mean that's a very it's a very new age term finding your purpose but i just feel that if you're open uh if you're trusting of the process and the fact that you'll be taken care of and whatever is happening uh, is happening for your own highest good the purpose comes to you but all you need to do is be open and trusting and i feel that's that's really what what worked for me and also quite sadly in that that one year that i left besides the fact that i left and not knowing what i was going to do i also suffered a very deep loss i lost my mother who was uh, my only parent you know because my father died when i was 5 years old and she was my mother father everything rolled into one and what a tremendous parent she was i mean she did a remarkable job of doubling as both and and so for me that was like a very very big uh, uh, that was a turning point for my life because suddenly in one stroke you felt that you know you'd lost both your parents it was that kind of a feeling and um, so i was really gripped with the uh, grief and at that stage you know i uh, decided to go on a spiritual journey because um, i wanted to process my grief on my own terms and be completely in the company of strangers who weren't telling me how to grieve when to stop grieving you know how it is you know people tell you oh be strong but that's such a ridiculous thing to say to somebody who's grieving you know and and you know the grieving process has no expiry date yeah you know there is no so i just disappeared uh, and i i didn't know where i was going i uh, checked into an ashram uh, it was a very large ashram in kerala it was a yoga ashram and i had some understanding of yoga and some experience and i thought let me go there you know for a month or so and just to be on my own in the company of strangers in a nice sacred um, kind of setting uh, which would just allow me to process my own grief and in the process i would learn some yoga as well that <laughs> that was just a just a side a bonus <clears throat> yeah yeah but the larger thing was that i just wanted to be on my own and just handle my own emotions and my grief on my own way and heal myself and uh, however you know like i said when you're open and trusting and don't have a plan in hand things happen and uh, i spent about 40 days in that ashram and um, in the company of beautiful souls around me uh, it was i think one of the most life transforming uh, experiences of my life and by the end of it i actually ended up doing a teacher training course because i wanted to stay there longer so they enrolled me they said why don't you just do this uh, i had some initial experience in yoga so i just went along again not questioning i didn't want to become a yoga teacher that was not my intention but i just since i was there i said okay since i'm here i may as well do it with no intention of becoming a yoga teacher i finished that and i was so um, i think the experience was so profound and so transformational that i felt compelled to share you know what i had experienced and the ancient wisdom of yoga with other people so that's where my journey of you know being a yoga teacher started again i was open i didn't i was trusting i didn't question a lot of times i would just leave my logical mind behind you know and it works sometimes and you just <laughs> drop your mind and just go from your heart and that's really my heart led me and you know like this okay this was just one thing and like this whatever else i have done has just happened i did not plan to become a life coach i did not plan to teach the louis say philosophy here in india those things just just happened it was just some kind of divine working uh, and and i was open i was open to the experience and for example i did the healer life uh, training in uk uh, I, i think 13 years back and i was one of the first few teachers uh, healer life teachers here in india to be teaching the work here that time nobody knew about louis here in india now of course there's a fair amount of awareness and again how it happened is i went to a yoga studio here to do a class and there was a poster over there saying that you know there's a healer life uh, workshop uh, based on the teachings of louis a and there's a certain teacher who's doing that and i had no idea i'd been reading the, you know the books of louis a but i had no idea that there was a teacher here in india who was offering these workshops and i just saw it by chance there was a poster there and that particular day when i went the poster was there and i just went and did that two day workshop 
And, after and they do they say, shocked, don't they? they? They say they're things are coincidence, right? Things happen. And also, you know, when you step, when you actually get onto a path, the path it clears its way, is cleared, and things come into your into your kind of sight because they're meant to be there. But you don't pre-plan it, you know. It just happens by chance. And suddenly you're doing something else. You're directed in a different direction. You're, you're adding another skill or trait or, you know, something to your kind of portfolio. And it just happens because you stepped on that path. You have the trust that you've been saying, Suprana. And then you have the faith and you go, okay, let's see what happens here. And yeah. you just travel that, that, that lane. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. I had no intention of going for this workshop. I just saw a poster. I registered. I did into the two-day uh, retreat. Uh, very powerful. Again, by the end of it, I said, you know, this is wonderful. I've been reading the Louise books, but an experience-based thing like a workshop is something else, you know, because you really start living the principles rather than it just being academic booking, bookish knowledge. And after that, I was, again, there was this deep desire that I want to be trained in this so I can share this work with more and more people. You know, somewhere in my advertising days, because I was stressed out, I was, I never felt happy. I felt disconnected. Uh, I had everything, yet I had this always, you know, I was anxious and, uh, you know, not feeling abundant despite having the money. You know, this whole thing, I saw a lot of other people also suffer. They, they had everything, but they had miserable lives, you know. So there was no feeling of well-being. So I think maybe, you know, those 18, 19 years I spent in the corporate life and what I experienced and what I saw other people experience, I really wanted other people to experience what I was experiencing and make a difference in their lives in terms of their well-being, physical, mental and emotional, every which way. So I did that and I said, I've got to do this. I had no money that time. Traveling to the UK and paying for the course was like a big uh, thing. I just left it to the universe. I had no idea, but I was sure I would go. Mm -hmm. And within six months, various things happen, you know, money came from very unexpected sources because my intention was very clear to go for this training to UK. And within six months, I went, got trained and up since then, I've been teaching this work very regularly uh, here and it's making a difference to many, many people's lives over here, including my own. Because when I teach, it, the whole sort of everything is going through me. So therefore, the principles are working as much for me as uh, the other people because at some level you know i'm living those principles or i have to live the principles because you know i'm i'm teaching them so you know there has to be that integrity absolutely so, yeah. i totally believe so, in that in terms of integrity transparency authenticity you've got to have that if you're going to if you're going to spread the word right and if you're going to do some good and you're going to take your philosophy or whatever philosophy it is into the world there has to be all of that because otherwise it's a farce, right? And we're not uh, doing that. So yeah. I totally understand where you're coming from and, and, in terms of that. And, and Kiran, people also see through you. You know, your yeah. energy speaks. You you may say whatever you want to say. You may say, you know, come up with big platitudes and sound very noble and sound very wise. But, you know, your energy speaks for you. So people are not foolish. You know, your, your energy does transmit immediately. So it doesn't matter what you're saying, but it's really walking your talk. And that's, I think, in the, on the spiritual path, especially when you're a teacher, that's really important that, you know, you have to be walking the talk, not just talking the talk, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. I so totally, I, totally yeah, agree. So, yeah, yeah. So one tries to do that. Of course, we all screw up, you know. I mean, there are times that we all mess up. We're not always walking the talk, but at least the awareness is there. That listen, I messed up. And immediately you get back on track. So that kind of mindfulness is there. Uh, but we're all human, we all mess up and we all make mistakes, but then, you know, you get back on track immediately rather than wallow in it. Absolutely. I also, you know, the way I th see things is that if I can go to bed at night with a, a peaceful mind, I've done my job. Well, I've done good, right? I've done my job. I've done good. And that's mm -hmm. how you want to, you will sleep at night when you put yes. your head on the yes. pillow. It's like, this is bliss. This is yeah. peaceful. I am at peace. That's the place yeah. you need to be, right? Yeah. Whatever you're doing. So what are you doing currently? What's what's going on in the present? Well, you know, uh, Kiran, I, um, um, I call myself a teacher of God. So I just feel that I'm being used uh, every day I wake up. And the question I ask myself is, how can I serve today? And, you know, I get my answers. I serve in many ways. I serve by teaching yoga to people. 
I'm a service in my coaching sessions when I really sort of work one on one with people and uh, and try and help them na- navigate life in whichever area that they may be suffering. And relationships is a big one where people I think suffer. Relationships and you know unforgiveness I feel are two areas where I uh, have done a lot of work because I find most of the suffering of people comes in from this area. You know the lack of of forgiveness really keeps us stuck in many areas of our life. And that's what I, you know, that's my, my key learning from the Louise philosophy. One is loving and accepting yourself. And the second thing is forgiveness. Uh, I've recently been certified in something called A Course in Miracles and I've started teaching that as well. Um, and I do workshops based on the Louise philosophy. For example, next weekend I have a workshop on relationships. Every day, I, every month I offer a new topic. Uh, last three years, it's been pretty much online, but very soon I'll be doing on-site the way I used to earlier. But uh, it's really, it's, it's it's a blessing to be waking up and, um, you know, knowing that I'm going to be doing God's work today uh, and being open, being an open and a, you know, like, what what can I say, a pure instrument, a pure channel for the for God's work to go through through me. So that's really what I do. and. Um, and I just love my work. I feel blessed that I got a chance to reinvent myself, you know, after the age of 40. I see a lot of people suffer their misery in their corporate lives, but yet they're too scared to give it up because, you know, there's money involved. There's, you know, so much involved. It's called a, I think, golden handcuff. <laughs> that you have a golden handcuff, you can't sort of, you know, get out of that. So, but anyway, that's a choice that I made and I'm really happy with the choice that I made. And uh, I just feel really fulfilled, blessed to be doing the work I do. And I wake up feeling really happy and really looking at ways I can serve. And it's not just about, you know, Kiran, about um, serving through your work or being a teacher. You know, whatever you're doing, even being a mother, uh, some people say, oh, I'm just a housewife. It's not about I'm just a housewife. That's really, even that is God's work. You're, you know, taking care of people. You're raising kids. How important is that, you know, to mm-hmm. raise good good kids? You know, you're contributing in a big way. So, you know, this whole thing about higher purpose doesn't have to be this big, <laughs> you know, this yeah. big sort of massive thing. It could be small acts. It could be just being a loving presence in somebody's life. It could be, you know, being a loving mother and being a supportive mother. That's a big purpose also. So as women, we shouldn't under, you know, under, the value ourselves that oh I'm just a housewife oh I'm just a mother and I hear it a lot and yeah. I actually tell people you know that's that's that, that's one of the most difficult jobs you're doing and it's really God's work as well so whatever you're doing you know you can be making a difference I mean even something as simple as you know your interaction with people you know how you're talking to the waiter in a restaurant how you're talking to the person you know the bank teller you know somebody at the thing it's really I mean that even in that you are being of service by being a good loving presence and really treating people well, asking their names, you know, they a lot of them are nameless. So, you know, those kind of little random acts are also, you know, you're just being, you know, you're serving in some way by just, you know, being a loving presence to people. It doesn't have to be about being a teacher or a coach or a healer, but any way that, you know, you can make a difference. I think so, there's some really interesting points there, Suparna, because, you know, like, Yes, it's the way you conduct yourself. I mean, that that as mothers, I mean, I have two children. It's really important. I've been a single mom for the majority yeah. of my life. And I put myself as a mom first, not anything else, because that yeah. is a huge, huge role that one has. Because you're actually influencing the next generation and how they interact with other people. And if you do good via them... Yeah then you can just imagine the amount of, you know, goodness you're spreading through them to other people. So you have, it's, as you said, it's not a small job. It's in a very important role that we all have. And I also think it's quite interesting what you said about the golden handshake. But there's a couple of things there. People are afraid of doing, you know, separating out from the materialistic kind of, you know, all the financial kind of um pathway um but also you know in our culture it's like what will the world say to us you know well, who's going to say yeah. this what's going to say that where whether you're in the uk or whether you're in india whether you're any part of the in any part of the world people of our culture worry about what other people are saying and i go oh forget about that you know but people don't and i think 
you have to let go if you want to, as you said, and as I feel as well, is when you want to be in a different space and you want to be happy within yourself and you want to have joy and happiness in your life, you then have to make those decisions because otherwise you're going to be miserable till the day you die, right? And we, nobody wants that. Mm-hmm. And there are no second chances. You've just got to live life without any regrets, you know. So I, I just feel happy that I got a chance and I had the courage to reinvent. I think everybody has a choice to reinvent if they really want to, if they're unhappy in whatever they're doing. But it's a choice that you have to make. So it's really about making a brave choice and then just sticking to it. And I never regret the choice I made. Uh, never mind the kind of money I was earning. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it it's really sort of, I, I just feel it is wonderful that I did that. I always say, you know, to a lot of my students and the people I coach that, you know, uh, faith is like a muscle. It's like, you know, we exercise physical muscles. We go to the gym, we do yoga to strengthen our physical muscles. Faith is also a muscle. You know, the more you use it, like your physical body, your physical muscle, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And the stronger it gets, the more it works for you. You know, but you've got to allow it to work for you by, by surrendering to it. So I just feel that, you know, to strengthen your faith or your trust muscles day by day and it will never, it will never leave you wanting. <laughs> yeah. So that's been my experience. And, and some people think I'm, you know, like, they, they think I'm very, uh, just a bit too reckless because I just leave everything to trust and faith. But I, I'm very peaceful doing that. So I don't really, for me, I don't care about <laughs> how I perceive that, you know, everything is sort of, I leave it to God, I leave it to the universe. Uh, yeah. As long as you're happy with the decision, that's what really <laughs> matters, right? I mean, I take advice from my children, but they perfectly know that I will yeah. still do my own thing. I go, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do that instead. You know, I go the opposite direction to everybody else, right? So that's my, that's the way I live my life. And I like that yeah. recklessness because... It's not recklessness, actually. It's yeah. you have the faith and you go, all right, people might see you as reckless, but That's you it. in your mind know that you're yes. not reckless, that you actually have a Absolutely. reasoning for why you're doing what you're doing. Absolutely. It, totally understand. You know, it's, a feeling of, it, it's a feeling of safety. While others may perceive you as being very reckless and rash, but within you, you know that, you know, I'm safe. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely safe by taking this so-called reckless decision or whatever a choice I've made I know that I'm safe in this choice or this decision so it's a wonderful feeling within absolutely so what does the future look like for you have you got any kind of thoughts plans or you don't have any plans whatsoever you know I like I said all the wonderful things Kiran have happened to me uh, by not planning so from being a very rational person maybe 25 30 years back very logical very process driven, very goal oriented. I was very goal oriented and I just don't have any goals. I have no plans in life because I feel that whatever all the great milestones that have happened in my life have been completely unplanned. Uh, I don't call them accidents because I feel that there's nothing known as an accident. It's, there's nothing ever which is random. It's all a divine plan, uh, which is somewhere, you know, programmed for you. It's like, a, you know, like a program running and it's a plan. And, and and you just have to be open and trusting and it unfolds in the best possible manner for you. So, you know, very honestly, I want to share a, a prayer with you every morning. This is my prayer. Uh, just it's a three sort of three sentence prayer. It says, where would you have me go today? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to who? That's all. I mean, that's my morning ritual prayer. And that's my, I think that's really the, the way my life goes, that I will go wherever I'm asked to go. No goals, no plans, total freedom. <laughs> I just love the, I just love the prayer that you just shared. So first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that because it's so important. So let's move on to the bonus part of the podcast. So what five tips would you give to anybody who's under 50? So, uh, you know, I, I really can't see any distinction between over 50, under 50, but I will share some of the tips and I've tried to sort of segregate it in two different sections, but it doesn't really matter. I think all the tips for, are for everybody, especially women, uh, over the age of, you know, 50 or maybe even earlier. So one is that, you know, um, uh, take care of yourself first. 
and you know as as indian women we were never taught that because we had this whole role model of you know looking after the children and family the way our mothers did you know there was this very self sacrificing martyrly kind of thing and somewhere we uh, bought in into that conditioning of you know everybody else is first and we felt very uh, virtuous in doing that you know so but it's really important especially for women you know close to 50 and over that take care of your first you've done enough for your children and your families and your husbands and your extended families but you know it's time to take care of your first if you haven't done it right now because if you don't take care of yourself first then you're not you're not in any condition to take care of anybody else because ultimately i feel that you cannot serve from a empty cup your own cup has to be full for you to serve anybody so i really for me that whole self care thing is really important not from a selfish point of view but for caring for others in a more meaningful way that's one very important thing for all women um the other thing which i think i mentioned many times through the podcast that uh, the universe always has your back okay and that's been my abiding my guiding light my sort of anthem if i can call it uh, you know for my life that never mind what's happening even if something terrible is happening just that trust that the universe has my back and something good is going to come out of it i don't know what it is but you know the universe has my back um the other thing is we spoke about fear and you know being really scared in taking any decision which is like leaving a corporate career or something um i say that you know feel the fear and do it anyway you've got to jump in there and again if you have if you have a you know if you have a strong faith muscle if you've exercised and developed a strong faith muscle you will be able to feel the fear of course we feel fearful and there's nothing there's no shame over there but do it anyway because you don't know what's on the other side um the other thing is i feel that you know and i did it for a lot of my time and this is from my own experience that you know i used to pride myself of being the strong woman you know to be perceived as really strong and but you know you don't have to be strong all the time it's okay it's okay not to be okay all the time you don't have to be positive all the time and happy all the time and have a smiley face all the time it's okay to you know to go through different types of feelings um uh and it's okay to ask for help because somewhere again you know as strong women we feel oh we can't ask for help it's okay to be vulnerable you know and ask for help because out of that openness and vulnerability you know you don't know what that's how you know the universe works for you when you're open and vulnerable and you're okay about asking for help you know so i just feel that you don't have to be strong all the time it's okay to ask for help um the other thing is you know which is very important i think for all women whether it's under or over 50 is to have a kind of a morning ritual and that's something i really um i i for, for i mean i've been following a morning ritual uh, for many many years and i think you know i would and i tell all my students and all my you know coaches coaches and clients also that you know that's really important and whatever that ritual is it could be prayer it could be meditation it could be just deep breathing it could be just going for a walk uh, it could be just doing affirmations anything that makes you feel happy light joyous uh, it could be listening to music or even dancing you know anything which raises your vibration you have to invest your first half an hour of the morning is really sacred and invest in a morning ritual and you will be surprised the way the day unfolds when you've taken care of yourself you you're feeling lighter you're feeling more energetic physically and mentally you know the day unfolds your the way you respond to situations is so much different you don't you don't react you respond you know you know coming from that place uh, so whatever that ritual is it's really important um so that's i think an overall tip to everybody um and, and is that the five tips now or do we is there have you got a couple three I, tips I, I, i can give you a separate, separate two for uh, women over 50 that um, uh, that you know i think over 50 we have we we all have gifts that's a you know umbrella kind of global statement but i think over 50 we have a whole wealth of our wisdom you know the richness of our wisdom and our lived experience and that's the biggest gift we can give to people and we don't have to be a teacher or a coach or a healer to do that even in whatever you are doing you know by sharing your lived experience your wisdom through the years what you've learned i mean that's a gift itself 
so i think you know the, the fact that you know that we all have a gift um god is working through us all the time uh we just have to be open and trusting and the purpose like i said will come to us but believe that we all have a gift to give especially the gift of experience and wisdom after 50 is great we have so much to share um the other thing is like a lot of times when we embark on something whether you know it's what you're doing um that you turned podcaster at the age of 59 you said of 58 and what i'm doing or many many other women who you know start a fresh at this juncture is that you know we all at least i did it we go through what's called the imposter syndrome that who am i you know like you know we all go through mm. that feeling of unworthiness who am i to be doing this work who the hell do i think i am you know so i also when when i was you know training for my coaching certification when i was you know going i mean to intense training to become a coach i said who the hell am i hell am i you know my own life is so messed up who am i to coach other people you know so so that dialogue it happens to a lot of us but you know that's a horrible bully voice don't listen to it that's a mean voice pulling us down so don't listen to it and one last thing if i can say is that um, you know if there's only one prayer that you say you know my life is very prayerful and prayer based based so i talk a lot about prayer um and i'm not a religious person this is more of you know i'm a more spiritual person i'm not really i don't follow any uh, uh, religion really but if there's only one prayer that you can say every day it's a very simple prayer and i'd like to leave everybody with that thought let it be just thank you god thank you god thank you god that's that's all that's the only prayer you need and that's really about you know having uh you know have living life with gratitude you know so just that is enough just if you say thrice thank you god that is more than enough that's all the prayer you need nothing else is required so that's really again something that i practice and i i'd like to share with everybody that that's the only prayer you need in life and that's it i think that's mm. such a beautiful prayer and i think gratitude is so important and i think there's no more to be said on anything because to me that actually finishes our podcast in a most beautiful and honorable way and i just like to say thank you sabrina for being here thank you god for bringing you to me and for us to connect and i think who knows where we go from here so thank you thank you giran it was so wonderful and there was so much more to to you know to share but maybe we'll share it on a one on one basis but it was wonderful thank you so much for having me and it was really i had a lot of fun doing this and thank you so much thank you for listening to you are not invisible after 50 podcast if you want to hear more from some amazing women who are over 50 who are kicking ass and making impact then don't forget to follow us right here on apple podcasts or spotify remember to subscribe rate comment and share with other women through your social media let's spread the word across the world that you don't have to be invisible after 50 check out our other services on www.yourenotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on instagram facebook linkedin tiktok and youtube and always remember that life doesn't end at 50 in fact it's just beginning But wait, we have even more to offer. Join us and tune in to our other podcast, Shamelessly Untamed, a transformative series that encourages you to embrace your true self and celebrate your uniqueness. Make sure to subscribe to Shamelessly Untamed podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to rate, comment and share with anyone who can benefit from its content. explore our additional services at www.roaringahead.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. We look forward to you connecting with us. Thank you.